So now in this video, we're going to do some uh, demonstrations. First, we're going to look at the schematic, though, of voltages across series components. So the basic rule is when you have components in series, the voltages across them will equal the total voltage across all of them. So the voltage across each of them will add up to the uh, total voltage, I should say. Now, to the capacitor, I have a uh, switch schematic symbol. I'm just going to use a jumper. Uh, parallel to it and uh, so when the switch is open it's as if the switch doesn't exist or when I remove the jumper it, it won't exist as far as the circuit is concerned when we close it then we'll have a parallel connection but that'll be a direct connection to ground that's the main thing as far as the cathode of the LED is concerned and uh, that'll completely discharge the capacitor what that will give us is a capacitor that's discharged it'll have zero volts across it so that's one of our extremes most of the time with this circuit you'll be in one extreme or the other unless uh, you're really pressing a switch uh, rapidly or something but uh, in any case for this video we're gonna either be in one extreme or the other one extreme is that the capacitor is shorted and uh, so whatever charge difference it may have it'll instantly uh, discharge they'll go back to their original plates and you won't have a voltage difference. At that point, you can see here we'll have a current path. I'm going to use 7 volts because that works well with my oscilloscope. We'll see why later on. It has 8 divisions going up. Each one will represent a volt. And uh, so that keeps you from going all the way up to the top. But uh, in any case, 1 kilo ohm resistor, LED. Now we have a direct connection to ground. The LED, we're going to use a red one. It's going to drop about 2 volts. If you use a blue or a green one or certain other colors, it will drop about three volts in this case but uh, we're going to use red that'll drop about two and uh, that'll leave five volts across the 1000 ohm resistor because remember we got seven volts total that's across those two components now since we got a direct connection to ground the LED it's gonna have current going through it. it's gonna drop about two volts that'll leave about five volts LED doesn't limit current but it drops some voltage we got uh, five volts across a 1000 ohm resistor that's going to give us about 5 milliamps of current flowing through the resistor and LED right there. So we'll measure the voltage though. We'll see 5 volts. Now we're going to go to the other extreme. So as I said before, I'm going to use a jumper instead of a switch. But uh, either way, I remove the jumper or I open a switch. And what we have is a capacitor that can charge now. So it's not going to go to 5 volts instantly. It takes time based on the RC time constant. So you take the uh, farads, this is one one thousandth of a farad, multiply it by the resistance in ohms, this is a one thousand ohm resistor. So one thousand times one one thousandths is one. So that would be one second, that number is in seconds, and it takes five of those. So five seconds for the capacitor to go from fully discharged to fully charged when charged through a resistor. When we close the jumper, we'll have an instant uh, discharge because there's no resistance. But in uh, any case, it's gonna take about five seconds to get to about five volts. So we're gonna go into a little more depth now. So those numbers are a lot more approximated than the ones down here. So these are more accurate down here. As I said before, we're gonna use a red LED. It has a forward voltage about two volts. We'll see that when current is going through it. Uh, about 5 milliamps. It'll be close to uh, 2 volts. Once we get close to uh, 0 milliamps of current, almost no current flowing through it, and finally it will be no current, it'll drop about 1.5 volts. So actually we're going to see the capacitor get to about 5.5 volts instead of uh, 5 volts. But uh, these numbers are good enough for just uh, approximation. So here we are, we got 7 volts at the power supply right there and about 5 milliamps of current. This is right on the edge of 4 and 5. It's just a uh, trickle below 5 right now, so it says 4, unfortunately. Not as accurate as a uh, multimeter. So in any case, the voltage we're looking at is the voltage across the capacitor. This is a 1000 microfarad capacitor and again, we have that jumper going directly to ground. And we could charge it up to 35 volts if we wanted to. That side has to be more negative right there. It's polarized. And uh, so 
Right now it's completely discharged and either side is more positive or negative, but when we start charging it, the negative side is to ground, that'll be the more negative side. That will be more positive, it'll head to the uh, positive supply. So first we're going to look at these voltages. No voltage across the capacitor because we have a direct connection. By the way, we got the uh, cable coming out to these alligator clips, sorry about the mess over there, and I just uh, clipped the alligator clips to uh, jumpers. I can move them wherever I want. So when you see me move the jumpers, that is what is going on. If we put them backwards, so right now it says zero volts, but if we put them backwards, the uh, voltage would go more negative. If we had the more positive there, they're more negative there. And uh, the line would go down there. We wouldn't even notice unless we know exactly where the bottom is there. I think I bumped it up a little bit. So in any case, that is the capacitor. There's zero volts. So if we come to the LED, you can see there's current going through it because it's lit up. And uh, right now we have a direct connection to both sides of the uh, LED the cathode down there. And you can see we got two volts. So it doesn't matter if I go to ground or right there because we have a direct connection to ground with the uh, jumper there. So that is ground. The uh, capacitor doesn't exist as far as the LED and the resistor are concerned at the moment. So now we're going to go across the resistor and the LED. And you're going to see uh, 7 volts right there, the supply voltage. And uh, again, we're connected to ground, we're connected to the positive supply. It doesn't matter if I connect there or there right now because of that jumper. We're going to go to the resistor and see we saw 2 across the LED. And now we got about 5 right there across the resistor. And now what we're going to do, we're going to look at the capacitor while it charges. So to get it to charge, it has no charge right now, zero volts right there. To get it to charge, we'll zoom in a little bit since we know where the uh, alligator clip uh, cables are. And uh, we will release the jumper. And as I said before, it's going to take about five seconds. So actually a little bit longer, I think, in this case, because the uh, voltage that's being dropped by the LED went down. But in uh, any case, there you can see we got uh, one, two, three, four, five seconds. That's when we're about fully charged. But again, the LED is going to start dropping how much voltage it drops, and current's going to flow a little bit longer. But in any case, this is this is close enough. So there you can see we got five volts, and it's going to stay five volts right there. And uh, that's back to where we started when I uh, unpaused it. So we got five volts, a little more. About five and a half across the capacitor. As I said before, that'll probably give us one and a half. Here we'll see seven volts. About one and a half across the LED. Because no current's flowing through it, but it has a voltage across it. This seven volts across the capacitor and the LED is uh, pushing back against the power supply. So the power supply is squeezing seven volts onto them, but they have seven volts built up across them and there means there's no voltage difference across the uh, resistor right there and uh, so no current is flowing that's why the LED is not lit and the capacitor voltage is not going up anymore so in any case I think we already saw the LED about uh, 1.5 and then we can look at the resistor remember the electrical property of the resistor that's the resistor and the LED is that for each volt across it, since it's a 1000 ohm resistor, you'll get one milliamp of current flowing through it. There's no voltage across it. No current is flowing through it right there. So we looked at the two states when the capacitor is uh, fully charged and fully discharged. If you want to look at the uh, curve of the resistor. So when I connect the jumper, I can't find it right now, but I got a red one just waiting right here to take its place. When I short the capacitor, I'm going to go up here, it will instantly discharge. Current can flow through the resistor LED and uh, to ground right there and you can see the voltage instantly went up. Now when I remove the jumper, the capacitor will be building up a charge across it, its voltage will be going up, it's taking away voltage from the resistor, current is slowing down. So you can see there's a big voltage change at first, the LED was brighter. That's because a lot of current was still flowing for about a second and then a fair amount, you know, for like another second. And then after another second, not uh, much change anymore because the capacitor was getting uh, relatively close to 5 volts. 
in the last couple of seconds, just I barely change it. And we're getting a speck of change afterwards, but we consider five time constants. In this case, five seconds, either fully uh, charged, if you're charging the capacitor through a resistor, or fully discharged, if you're discharging it through a resistor. Here we're discharging it through a jumper, so it's instantaneous. There's no resistance. You get an instant charge or discharge. By the way, uh, don't do that with uh, probably capacitors, a much larger value. And uh, don't uh, short a capacitor at high voltages either. Use a resistor to discharge them to limit the current. Uh, the high current could vaporize metal in those cases. But this uh, small value capacitor, relatively small and low voltage, makes it pretty safe. So in any case, this was a long video. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other ones I post on the screen. If you can donate, please do. I have links down below. That'll help out the most, but just watching videos helps out a ton too. I appreciate that. I'll see you in the next video.